Man, all I gotta say is I was totally wrong about the Miami Dolphins. Not in the sense of their players or coaches, but just how good they can be. Because the way they are starting the 2023 season is something that could end up being very special. But what's going on guys, it's Rampage coming at you. Please remember to leave a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel, because it always does help me out. It helps more Miami Dolphins fans see it. Help me get to 5,000 subscribers, I'd greatly appreciate it. And I just want to start with the main guy, the head guy, Mike McDaniel, who honestly has been one of the best head coaching high. I think that the Dolphins have ever had with him arguably being one of the top play callers behind Kyle Shanahan in the league right now and overall what I like about Mike's style is he's more worried about being the funniest person in the room than being the smartest which overall I think is a refreshing take on coaching and something that he has done flawlessly thus far in his coaching career and I don't know I just feel like in today's NFL players respond to that type of coaching I just overall think that when players feel their best they'll play their best and overall it's just really uncanny Mike's ability to connect with people like from outside the building you can really tell he cares about people and he's not afraid to talk about it or really talk about anything and really to me that's the difference maker here is how he approaches his relationships which will ultimately benefit him the people you know he surrounds himself with the players and the entire Dolphins organization and to me what I see now and what I can see long term for this team that has been so indicative thus far is a good coach who adapts a system to fit his players where as many coaches try to run their own schemes and specific standards, which is really unfortunate because oftentimes it's at the expense of the players. Like for example, what I've noticed thus far this early in year number two is Mike McDaniel has truly defined the offense around Tua because I think it's pretty well known by now that Tua doesn't have the best arm strength compared to like Mahomes or like a Herbert, but he is a very, very accurate passer, which means instead of, you know, implementing a deep throwing offense, you're implementing something that primarily runs 15 to 20 yard routes in the middle of the field whereas you're not going to be throwing to the outside or deep where a weak arm is going to be an issue. It also helps McDaniel scheme up things when you have the league's fastest receiver and some of the most explosive offensive weapons and like I said the way the offense and routes are designed it makes it so much more frequent when these guys catch the ball they run in stride at full speed which makes it almost impossible for defenders to tackle or keep up with them and from a person that really doesn't watch the team a whole lot when I do get a chance to watch them I really get a sense of they are shifting and motioning and all kinds of ways too they aren't spamming it you know through thoughtlessly for you know the sake of doing it and you know it's just really impressive because after I think a certain point all the confusion really leads to a hesitant defense and a hesitant defense is never going to catch up with the dolphin skill players ever and you know that's why I love Mike McDaniel because he's always ahead and after all this they are at their best start since 2003 with a four and one record and a large part why this team is playing so well is because of Tua Tagovailoa. I mean, seriously, guys, at this pace, he would throw for 5,488 yards, which would break Peyton Manning's record of most passing yards in a single season at 5,477. Now, arguably this year, he is a top three quarterback in the league. So far on the year, he has a 71.7 completion percentage, 1,614 yards, 11 TDs to five interceptions, and a QBR rating of 111.9. Quite honestly, he is the best quarterback that this franchise has had in the last quarter century and it's really funny right now because both him and Brock Purdy are currently leading MVP odds right now and, and both are playing in very similar systems and I know when you're up with the best you have to compete with the best so when comparing him to Patrick Mahomes who has 767 air yards compared to 847 yards after catch whereas Mahomes have 703 air yards and 890 yards yards after catch and I don't know I just find the stat relevant and interesting but again who does Mahomes have to throw to right now Tyreek Hill has been playing spectacular like he always does, having an average of 18.1 yards, 651 receiving yards, 36 receptions to five touchdowns. I mean, you guys know, it's just impressive. Anytime he touches the damn football, he does something spectacular with it, and, you know, he keeps getting fined, which I think is ridiculous. Jalen Waddle, who's honestly been quite quiet this year, and I think that has a large part to do with the high-octane running game right now. He has an average of 14.4 yards, 245 receiving yards, 17 receptions to just one receiving touchdown. And the running back tandem between Devon A. Chan and Raheem Mostert, man, is just clicking on all cylinders right now. It sucks Devon is on IR, but, you know, I'm so excited I got to pick him up in my fantasy league. But so far, the rookie from Texas A&M has rushed for 460 yards with an average of 12.1 yards, 38 rush attempts to five touchdowns. And in my opinion, if the guy bulks up during the offseason, he's going to be way, way better in the team's clear running back number one. Raheem Mostert, in my opinion, currently occupies
utilize that role, rushing for 314 yards with an average of 5.4, 58 rush attempts to 7 rushing touchdowns. The guy is just so dynamic, and I honestly forgot that he came over from the 49ers a couple years ago, and it just sucks right now also because the team has been playing so good on offense with all the injuries on the offensive line. If they can get these guys back, they're going to continue putting up monster numbers the rest of the year. But so far, and I saw this comment on Reddit, we got the 70s running game combined with the receiving of Marina, Duper, and Clayton days in the early 80s. And I mean, 181 points already scored on the year is just absolutely insane for this offense. And through the first five weeks of the season, no team has ever put up as many offensive yards. But I think in large part, if this team wants to continue having the success it's having, it needs to step up on defense, especially when it comes to the league's turnover differential, which Miami currently ranks towards the bottom at. Against the Giants, the Dolphins had three giveaways without a single takeaway. And on the season, the Dolphins are currently minus three in turnover margin. With teams like the Vikings, Patriots, Raiders, Browns, Commanders, Giants, Bears, and Panthers all behind them. And currently as it stands right now, the Dolphins have forced just five takeaways in as many games, which is the 11th fewest in football. And overall, in my opinion, it's not a lack from pressure on the quarterback. It's more so on the back end. And with Jalen Ramsey not coming back till next month, they're going to need some serious, serious help from other guys. Because if this team wants to make serious noise in the playoffs this year, they have to have guys step up all over the place on defense. And really it boils down to it's Vic Vangio's first year as defensive coordinator for the Dolphins and it's going to take some time for this full scheme to gel out. And I think really against the New York Giants offense you saw them kind of hit their stride a little bit with seven sacks on the day. And with Jalen Phillips missing Sunday's game you saw a huge huge step up from Andrew Van Ginkle. But undoubtedly he's been the best Dolphins pass rusher through the first five games. But other than him the two most impressive guys on the defense to me is Javon Holland who's recorded 43 tackles, three forced fumbles and three passes defended this year. David Long Jr. who has 36 tackles, one sack, and one forced fumble. But I don't know guys, I really feel that if the Dolphins defense takes major, major strides to keep up with the offense, they can go anywhere this year. And if Mike McDaniel's vision comes to fruition, I think this team can go anywhere. They can maybe even go to the Super Bowl just because of how they're built right now. And I don't see them being bad anytime soon again. I think this is a really good football team and something I think the rest of the NFL needs to be prepared for because the Dolphins are not going away anytime soon and Mike McDaniels is going to make sure they're in every single game. But anyway guys I hope you did enjoy this video. Please remember to leave a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Comment down what you think down below. I answer all my comments. I love talking to people. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.